hello. It is, let's see, 1.30 on the 81st day of our Corona Confinement Slash Retreat, and I'm calling it Countdown Day 10. We're counting down day one, which is going to be the end of this series, and uh, which I announced the other day I'm going to uh, I figured it was going to be a 90-day process, and I do this for 90 days, and um, I have another project that I will be working on, and uh, study of my book, Rise of the False God, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that will be same time, 1.30, works for me. And then we will have an option um, video. I'm going to try uh, Facebook uh, Messenger Rooms, and if that, or I'm going to try that, or I'm going to try Zoom. One or two. I would love to have you join me for that. We'll have a chance to talk about it. I plan at this time to continue Sunday services. I like it, and those folks who join me seem to like it. So I'm going to keep doing that. Our countdown day 10 uh, till the closing of this series. I'm hoping you have enjoyed it and have found benefits in helping you cope with the confinement, uh, the virus at large. I'm not denying it's out there and it's even in many cases growing, but we practice the same principles in any event. Well, today our national day calendar, it, there's a bunch of things on it, but a couple that I picked out that I thought were very important. The first one is uh, National Higher Education Day. That is so important because the more we know, the more it is easy for us to deal with complex situations in our world. Um, we would like to, I certainly would like to see us increase our educational um, abilities and our uh, system. I would like to see that come up because it appears to have slipped along the live line somewhere. It is also, good news, bad news, um, National Drive-In Movie Day, and I know there is a drive-in movie about four, an hour maybe from me in Manchester. No, it's not Manchester. I forgot where it is, but maybe I'll try to get up there, but not tonight. There's also a drive-in movie in Plainville, Connecticut. So they are out there. Um, but if they're at drive-ins are so fun and right now they picked up because they're safe You know, it's a place you can go to the movies and sit in your car and I remember the days when we would uh, my mom would make a, a Bunch of popcorn and she'd put it in a brown paper grocery bag and we'd put pour butter on it and shake it all up and off we'd go to the movies those were the days and I also love little commercials concession I love to get potato sticks they would come in a little wooden boat oh drive-in movies were so wonderful and the whole family got to sit together and watch the same thing how common is that anymore I hope it gets more common down the line well today the topic is um, oh it's also national yo-yo day no, thank you. I never was a yo-yo fan, but you got a yo-yo, drag it out. This is the day. Well, today we are talking, uh, did you feel that? And there's different kinds of feelings. Physical, well, there's a physical where you touch things of the sense of touch is certainly to protect and to give us sources of, you know, pleasure, petting a cat, um, uh, anything that that's that good physical sensation, sitting in the sun, 
uh, that's all beautiful. You know, food is not all taste. A lot of it's feeling. I could never figure out, I, I still can't figure out why, you know, I only like linguine for some things and elbows for other things. And it's it, this thing where every different kind of macaroni, different kinds of uh, sauces. It's interesting. But the feeling that's most important that I would like to talk about today is the uh, sensing. That is a, sort of a form of feeling. The sensing faculty of our mind, of our being, of our consciousness. We talked about the four phases of consciousness, the lower two being human thought and human emotion. And uh, then on the higher quadrant is uh, intuitive, which is receiving from divine mind uh, and sensing. Now, there's a very important part about both of them. No matter whether, if you're talking about a, a feeling, feelings generally come from an experience or a thought. In other words, there's something that puts that energy into motion. Hence, we call emotions energy in motion what it is. Whenever you feel something going through your mind or through your body, an emotion, you have energy. Scientists have proven that, um, it, it, that there's really no such thing as solid matter as this is said to be. The scientists have proven it is molecules that are vibrating at different rates. The faster a molecule vibrates, the less substance it has, the slower it it vibrates, the more solid it is. So you can see just with that understanding that if you want to to lift up to your, uh, higher, higher consciousness, uh, to be more sensitive to the realm of energy, you don't want to be too dense. You want to be able to be light. They used to say that uh, angels can fly because they take themselves lightly. So much is about lifting up. You know, the ancient Egyptians had a, uh, uh, their belief system included saying that when you died, you were taken uh, by this little boat uh, to the uh, nether or dark region and uh, there you would have your heart placed on a scale and your heart for you to get to uh, their depiction of heaven in order for you to get to the afterlife your heart had to be lighter than a feather so there'd be scales and your heart would be on one side and a feather on the other side. You know, some days our hearts are very, very heavy. And generally that's not one of our better days. We have different reasons for our heavy heart. Some are valid and some are not. Some are personal and some are principal. It's very good to be able to uh, discern them both. I'd like to uh, share with you something I have not shared uh, with people before because it's kind of radical. <laughs> I don't even know if it would fly with the uh, unity uh, people in the unity movement. Because did you ever wonder why uh, God is always called a he? He, 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 he. And um, I had this, this thought that um, generally it is a, a, a thought or an idea that precedes an action. So if we look at the, the masculine energy as uh, coming in as being uh, assertive, and, or, or yeah, I think that's the word, assertive and the, that's not the word, the female energy would be receptive. 
So the male energy would be would be uh, assertive and the female energy receptive. In consciousness, we have to the divine idea comes in, and uh, the then the uh, the female energy receives it. It's just like uh, uh, permeates the outside of the um, egg and therefore life begins. It's just one of those things, you know, those are the kind of, of things I spend my time thinking about, you know, had the question of myself the other day, what do stink bugs smell like? I don't think I want to know bad enough to like squish one so you'd know. So I was just kind of curious to myself, what do they smell like? But I don't want to smell it. Uh, so my mind kind of, my mind lives up in a very light area. I guess. But how do we apply to what's going on in our world and in our lives and how can we make it better? If everything is energy and on a vibrational level, when those re, when the vibration comes to us, when the energy comes to us, we will either have positive or a negative reaction or response to that energy. A reaction tends to be negative. A response tends to be receptive, positive. Let me think about it. Even if I don't agree with it, let me think about it. So... Do you remember, if you ever saw the movie, the Star Wars movies, and if you remember, I think it was the first movie when uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi was teaching Luke Skywalker about how to use his lightsaber. And he, um, he had this orb and he blindfolded Luke Skywalker and the idea was to be able to attune his mind to the vibrational energy of the orb. So there he was. But he became very successful with it. How did he be become successful? By tuning in to the vibration and then responding to where the vibration was coming from. If we could all do that in our lives to receive the vibration, sometimes... It's why we say we can't solve a problem at the level it was created. We are too into it. We are too locked in. We are being too dense and not enough lightness to pick up a solution to turn that problem into a project. Now, you know, um, in, uh, I, in Jeremiah, I believe, is where uh, God says to... Um, Jeremiah, I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. Now, also different translations say, I will write it on their inner parts. Because I don't know about you, but I feel stuff on a cellular level through my whole body. And sometimes I feel things in different parts of my body. Um, oddly, if I feel like if, if I'm... Um, too high if I'm on a high spot and I'm afraid I'm going to fall or if I see somebody else going to fall I feel it in the back of my knees if I sense one of my children is going to be hurt I actually feel it in my generative area it's like a you know this this is a tool of ours our feelings as opposed to our physical emotions they, our feelings, our sensing ability rises above the, the, the human knee-jerk emotions, okay? And when, when uh, God said, I will put my law within them, I will. Uh, the heart metaphysically speaks combined energy of thought plus feeling. We've talked about that before. Cannot thought plus feeling, and everything serves a purpose. 
And as hard as it is to believe that something like a coronavirus would serve a purpose, if we don't consider that possibility, we could be missing a great opportunity for growth. Where did it come from? Did it come from the base nature, the deepest, lowest nature? Or did it come from something spiritual? That is ours to discern. We are told what we can feel, we can heal. But in order to heal it, we must feel it. And again, when we are in our lowest state of consciousness, lose a degree of our sensitivity. You probably never heard of Damian Brinkley. Uh, unfortunately, my version of his movie trashed and uh, it doesn't work anymore, but it was a great, great story. You can look him up. Damian Brinkley was a really nasty, mean, rotten, terrible person. He was. He would start fights everywhere. You know, he would he would deliberately try to pick fights and cause trouble wherever he went. Well, one day there was a storm. It was a terrible storm. And he was talking on the phone, on a landline. And a bolt of lightning came in and struck him. And it struck him so hard, his shoes melted to the floor. They, they, it's not necessarily, I don't mean melted, melded, they stuck. They were like glued to the floor. He was blown out of them. And he was unconscious for days. And eventually he came back. He felt like he'd been, you know, uh, electrocuted through his whole body, which he had. Had a lot of healing to do. But when he came out of it, he became a completely changed man. And one of the things he knew he had to do was to go and make good on all the evil, all the mean things he had done. Now, uh, he did point out when he, when he was in his height of rages, he did not have a sense of conscious, conscience, and sometimes he didn't even have a sense of consciousness, and he didn't feel pain with someone beating him. Do you see how dense that is? It's so dense. What our job is and what our intention is, is to lift our consciousness higher, out of the density where we can come very sensitive. Now, when I say that, you're not going to like this because nobody likes it when I say this, but we have to watch what we allow into our consciousness because where the mind goes, energy flows and manifestation follows. That's the way it works. It works that way whether we like it or not. When I was scrolling through something uh, on the news looking for, uh, I don't know, I was doing some research this morning, and I came across an advertisement, and all it just scrolled by, it, but it reminded me, there is a game, and don't get mad at me, that's just take what I'm saying and weigh it, okay? You don't have to like it, just weigh it. But it's uh, the game which most people know about that's called Call of Duty. And it's violent, and it's deadly, and it completely lacks human compassion, which we have a great need for today. And when I just caught, caught the glimpse of the, the image from the cover of the game Call of Duty, all I could think of was seeing all those military or paramilitary or pseudo-military people all lined up, especially in Washington. They're there looking for you know, not what it's about. In, it, it, I would imagine in the worst of conditions, we should fight for our rights. I, you know, but I'm praying that we will find a place in consciousness where um, we won't need to go in that direction. But I can promise you this. The more we involve our minds in violent thinking, in violent entertainment, in violent songs, in all forms of violence, also the over overexposure we have to um, uh, 
I don't know how to say it, uh, promiscuous sexuality, uh, the more we're going to have, the more um, uh, sexually transmitted diseases we're going to have the more um, broken relationships we're going to have. The more, it's just the way it works. I'm not judging. I'm not saying better or worse, this or that. But I'm just saying that's the way it works. So watch your consciousness. Watch what you let into it. Here's an experiment for you. Uh, you know how we talked about it takes six weeks to change? I don't even know if most people are capable of doing this. We'll have the time because through our limitation or uh, a period of time. Um, watch only things like TV land, G-rated things. Before you watch the G-rated things, you may be find, may find, that your sensitivity begins to increase. The same thing is through, also true of inspirational things. If you uh, have, uh, remember I told you yesterday, I'm like Johnny Five, info, info, input, input. Um, fill your input with good things. There are good, inspirational, kind, loving movies, not sappy romances. I'm sorry, that gives you Uh, you know, I got married because um, of romance, which is not the same as love. Mark my words. When you have thoughts in, in your mind and in your heart, positive or negative, the first thing you ask is where did that come from? Where did that come from? Is it coming from your lower consciousness? Is it coming from your higher? Does it cause you to have thoughts of pride, envy, wrath? Uh, avarice, gluttony, are you putting personal desires before your own or the whole, highest good of the whole? Well, that was a lot to think about, wasn't it? Do you feel it? Pay attention to your feelings. The more you pay attention to and uplift your consciousness, the more sensitive you are going to be to right thoughts, right action, and creating together a world that looks sorry about that. <laughs> a world that works for all, all colors, all faiths, all people, everywhere. Okay? Let's do that. I challenge you. Have a great day. God bless you. And know I behold the divinity in you. Bye-bye.